Hello, Monetization Nation. This is a Sunday episode, and I'm Nathan Gwilliam, your host. In today's episode, we're going to discuss mental health, and we're going to reference a sermon given by an educator and religious leader named Jeffrey Holland. His sermon is called Like a Broken Vessel. In this sermon, Holland talks about mental health and the need we all have to care for our own mental health and the mental health of others. And this is a a topic that's particularly close to my heart. In one of my previous episodes, I told a story about my business partner who committed suicide. And I, I want to retell that story because I think it's particularly appropriate for this episode. A few years ago, I was getting ready for church and I received a phone call from a business partner that I loved. And this business partner told me that he was getting ready to go to church. Um, there was a, a ceremony that was happening that day and, and told me he was then going to kill himself. And I could tell he was really serious. And so I told him to stay at church and don't leave the building. And I would get people there and I would be on the first available flight. And so I called a couple of, uh, of friends who went down there and, and met him at church. And, and I was on a flight and I got there and, and I met up with him um, at church as well. And I stayed with him uh, for about five days. And during that time, I, I did everything I could to help him. I'm obviously not a counselor, and, and I'm not an expert in these kinds of issues. And um, a group of friends, uh, we had him institutionalized, and, and he, he's very smart. He was a Harvard MBA just a, a very bright man, and he knew all the answers to give, and and he was able to to get himself out of the hospital very quickly. And after five days of doing everything I could and trying to help this very dear friend, I went home. And about five days later, uh, I received news that that he had killed himself. And I I learned a lot from that experience. This, this man felt very disconnected with people in his life. Uh, he felt like the problems he was facing in his life were, were insurmountable. According to a study by the National Institute of Mental Health, 72% of entrepreneurs are directly or indirectly affected by mental health issues. This is a stark contrast to just 48% of non-entrepreneurs being affected. One thing I learned from this experience with my business partner, the the biggest takeaway was kind of an analogy of a bridge and the weight load that a bridge can carry and how that relates to an entrepreneur. Uh, When I lived in a town in Utah called Spanish Fork, we lived right by a footbridge that went over the river. And it was a very strong, well-built bridge and worked really well. I bet you could get 20 or 30 or more people crossing this bridge at the same time. And the bridge would hold all of those people and, and not have any problems. But if you tried to drive a tank across that bridge, I'm sure it would collapse. Uh, the bridge was not intended to carry that much weight. And that was kind of the takeaway for me is that this business partner of mine, his bridge was carrying too much weight and he couldn't handle it. It was, it was more than he was able to bear and, and he crumbled. Um, there have been times in my business career where I could feel the weight on my bridge being way too much. And, and I've had to learn over the years to reduce the weight on my bridge. Nobody's bridge can hold, you know, more weight than it's intended to carry. And we have to be wise. And entrepreneurs 
um, often are, are carrying this weight of of this business and and so many people's livelihood on livelihoods on their shoulders, and and sometimes that is overwhelming and more than they can bear. And we we have to be very careful of that. And when we find ourselves in that situation, we have to reduce the weight on our bridge. So in the talk, Holland said, quote, however bewildering this may be, these afflictions are some of the realities of mortal life, and there should be no more shame in acknowledging them than in acknowledging a battle with high blood pressure or the sudden appearance of a malignant tumor, unquote. As Holland said, these things shouldn't be shameful to talk about. We all experience them to some degree or another. So to paraphrase Holland, he said that if we had appendicitis, we would, we would pray and, and try to get a blessing and then would seek the best medical care available. And he advises that we should do the same thing with emotional disorders. God expects us to use all of the gifts that he's provided to help us in the challenges that we go through. There are many successful entrepreneurs who've struggled with mental health. One of these is the founder of CNN, Ted Turner. According to Medium, Turner is considered one of the most brilliant entrepreneurs and businessmen of the 20th century. He also suffers from bipolar disorder. After his third marriage ended in 2001, Turner contemplated suicide. His father had struggled with bipolar disorder as well as committed suicide. Turner admitted that he experienced moments of extreme depression and suicidal thoughts. He fought through that and achieved so much. Source, ibpf.org. Turner suffered with bipolar disorder through most of his life, but still became a successful and influential pioneer in his field. He was admired for his business acumen, his courage, and his strength in the face of adversities, including but not limited to bipolar disorder. He was definitely a man who not only survived, but thrived with his mental illnesses. Source, medium. So how can we find peace and take care of our mental health? One way to seek help in our mental health struggles is through Christ. Quote, of God's greatest assurance in God's plan is that a Savior was promised, a Redeemer, who through our faith in Him would lift us triumphantly over these tests and trials, even though the cost to do so would be unfathomable for both the Father who sent Him and the Son who came. It is only an appreciation of this divine love that will make our own lesser suffering first bearable, then understandable, then finally redemptive. Turning to Christ is a great way to seek help, but as Holland said, it's not the only thing God expects us to do. Here are a few other things Holland lists to help us. This list is far from comprehensive, and the items in it may not work for everyone. Please use your best judgment and work with a mental health professional in deciding what may help you take care of yourself best. Quote, in preventing illness, whenever possible, watch for the stress indicators in yourself and in others you may be able to help. As with your automobile, be alert to rising temperatures, excessive speed, or a tank low on fuel. When you face depletion depression, make the requisite adjustments. Fatigue is the common enemy of us all. So slow down, rest up, replenish, and refill. Physicians promise us that if we do not take time to be well, we will most assuredly take time later on to be ill. Unquote. Uh, That was from Holland. Entrepreneurs especially need to pay attention to this one. When starting or running a venture, we may think, I'll rest when I get to this point. But often that point comes and goes or never comes, and we don't change a thing. If we continue like this, our stress and fatigue will only build, and we may burn out before we reach the next point. This is Calmer.com counsels, quote, Alongside productive working hours, giving yourself ample downtime is crucial. In its most simple sense, getting a good amount of rest and sleep can improve your productivity at work. You will also be more motivated while at work, knowing you have free time to enjoy and work towards, unquote. Holland said, quote, if things continue to be debilitating, seek the advice of reputable people with certified training, professional skills, and good values. Be honest with them about your history and your struggles. Prayerfully and responsibly consider the counsel they give and the solutions they prescribe, unquote. Sometimes our mental health is beyond the aid of a good night's sleep. If this is the case, seeking professional help can be a great option. We shouldn't be afraid to ask friends, family, or others in our support system to help us as well. One of the things 
that I misunderstood about suicide uh, was the correlation between uh, suicide and depression. Uh, I thought that that there was a very strong correlation between depression and suicide, and there is some correlation. Um, but it, but after my partner going through that situation, one of the things that I learned was it seems like there's a much stronger correlation between a lack of connection and suicide than depression and suicide. And so often, uh, if we want to help someone who's has suicidal thoughts and tendencies, uh, one of the best ways we can help them is to get connected. They can get connected with loved ones in their life. They can get connected with projects that are meaningful to them and hobbies. Um, they can often get connected even to service opportunities where they're participating in something that that has purpose and, and meaning for them. And, and often that connection uh, can be one of the, the tools uh, that, that helps a person who is, is dealing with suicidal tendencies. Holland continues, quote, if you're the one afflicted or a caregiver to such, try not to be overwhelmed with the size of your task. Don't assume you can fix everything, but fix what you can. If those are only small victories, be grateful for them and be patient. Dozens of times in the scriptures, the Lord commands someone to stand still or be still and wait. Patiently enduring some things is part of our mortal education, unquote. Unfortunately, we may not be able to fix everything, or it may take longer than we think it should. It's important to have patience with ourselves and find the small victories. If we made it through a stressful deadline, or even just made it through a stressful day, that is worth celebrating. Progress is progress, no matter how small. So right now, as I'm recording this episode, uh, we're in the middle of the Olympics. And yesterday, or the day before, was the the finals, I don't know the right name for it. I'm sorry if I'm using the right word, the wrong words. Um, it was the last day of, of the team competition for the, the women's gymnastics in the Olympics. So I'm, I'm sure I don't have the story accurate. I don't have all the information. Uh, but in the team competition, Simone Biles, who is the leader, the star of, of the U.S. women's gymnastics team, pulled out for mental health reasons. And I have been so impressed with how many people have stepped forward and supported her in that decision. And as I understand it with my lack of information, uh, part of her thought process was that she wasn't in a, a good place to compete and she didn't want to let down her team. And I am so impressed with that. The courage of standing up for her mental health. That isn't failure. That isn't lack of courage. That, that isn't letting down her team. When, when we acknowledge and recognize a mental health situation that we're going through, and we get ourselves into a safe place and get ourselves the help that we need, that is courage. That is strength. And and just like so many people have been supportive of Simone Biles, we need to also be supportive of people around us who are going through mental health issues. As we see those signs, we need to not tell them to just tough it out or uh, you know, get through it or, or be strong or have courage or, or whatever we think when we don't understand the situation. If someone had a broken leg and we were on a hike with them, would we just tell them to tough it out and hike it? Um, we wouldn't. We would be very understanding of that situation, and we need to have the same amount of grace for those people around us who are dealing with mental health issues. It is always okay for them to get to a safe and healthy place. It is always okay for people dealing with mental health issues to set healthy boundaries. Holland also said, quote, let us remember that through any illness or difficult challenge, there is still much in life to be hopeful about and grateful for. We are infinitely more than our limitations or our afflictions, unquote. This isn't to say we should dismiss our afflictions because we're so blessed, but gratitude is powerful. According to Harvard Health, quote, gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, and build strong relationships, unquote. 
In conclusion, Holland said, quote, whatever your struggle, my brothers and sisters, mental or emotional or physical or otherwise, do not vote against the preciousness of life by ending it. Trust in God. Hold on in his love. Know that one day the dawn will break brightly and all shadows of mortality will flee. Though we may feel we are like a broken vessel, as the psalmist says, we must remember that vessel is in the hands of the divine potter. Broken minds can be healed just the way broken bones and broken hearts are healed. While God is at work making those repairs, the rest of us can help by being merciful, non-judgmental, and kind, unquote. And see the Psalm uh, 31, 12. If you or someone you know needs help, you can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 or contact the Crisis Text Line by texting TALK, T-A-L-K, to 741-741. Here are some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, most entrepreneurs are affected by mental illness in some way or another. We shouldn't be ashamed if this is us. Number two, we can find peace in Christ and the power of his atonement in helping us through. Number three, we need to be aware of our stress level and mental health and take the time to look after ourselves. We need to make sure we're not driving a tank across a footbridge. And if our stress level is too high, if the weight on our bridge is too high, we need to immediately take action to lower that stress level. Get help. Number four, if we need it, we should seek the counsel of professionals and prayerfully consider what they have to say. Number five, sometimes all we can do is make it through the day. Rather than beating ourselves up about this, we should celebrate it. The day often looks much brighter the next morning. Number six, gratitude is a powerful tool to help us be a little happier or even have a better attitude. If this episode of Monetization Nation resonated with you, you can subscribe to Monetization Nation on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, our Facebook group, and on your favorite podcast platform. Thanks for joining me for this episode. I wish you success in taking care of your mental health. You are worth it and you matter. <laughs>